we, uh, we have received information that he is in the Kitchener Waterloo area and he's possibly going to turn himself into Waterloo Regional Police today. Do you have any more details on the arrest on uh, Saturday? Uh, Mr. Huey uh, was arrested uh, in the academy area, which is the north end of the city, without incident. Approximate time of day? That was in the early evening. Did you say the firearm was involved? Does that mean that the, the victim was, was shot? Or? Yes, the victim was shot. Can you say that that was the cause of death? No, I cannot say that. Uh, due to the pathologist and, and not being have any backing in the medical profession, I can't uh, determine the cause of that. Well, you you Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, do you determine whether or not um, the location on Mission Island was the location of the murder or was uh, the Kyoto transported there after the fact? That's information that we can't release to media or the public. Uh, it'll be uh, part of the court package that will be before the court. What well, can you tell us about the firearm? Is it a firearm that is legal to possess in Canada? I won't be able to comment on the firearm due to being in court now. Aside from the three people uh, named as suspects, is there any other persons of interest or any other people involved? Uh, not at this time. The three I've mentioned are the uh, two that have been arrested. One is on Canada wide and hopefully he'll be arrested uh, within the next day or so. Uh, we don't have any other people of interest, but that could change uh, through the investigation. The investigators are still doing a lot of work and interviewing people, uh, it could be possible that they identify others, but not at this time. Is it known uh, to police for any uh, past violent incidences or any other criminal activity before this? Uh, we don't know. He's from the Kitchener-Waterloo area, and due to being before the courts, I can't comment on his criminal background. What about the other two? I can't comment on the other two also. Thank you. Did Hardy Fox have his uh, legal representation with him when he turned himself in? I don't know that. Uh, was the first arrest of David Huey, was that um, uh, made possible through tips from the public or, or people coming forward? Through the tips from the public and people coming forward and through interviews uh, that we were able to identify uh, all three males. Any known past relationships between the three? The investigators are still working on that. What can you, look, why, why can't you uh, comment on whether it's guns and gangs related just yet? So can you go into detail about that? We, uh, the investigators through their interviews, um, if I could, if we could say it was a gang-related uh, homicide, we could comment, but they haven't made any of those connections as of yet. Still looking for tips? We are still looking for tips. We're looking for people coming forward. Uh, I would like to thank the local media. There's been a lot of um, speculation and uh, false leads on social media. Uh, the local media, being you, have not uh, jumped on it and ran with uh, misleading information, which has helped our investigation immensely. So I wanted to thank uh, the media. When you say that the, the, the charges that the three gentlemen are facing are uh, include kidnapping, uh, do you know how long that kidnapping might have taken place or what the circumstances of that was? Uh, we have a very good idea, but I won't be able to comment on that. Uh, before because it's before the courts and for interviews that are upcoming and we're trying to get the timeline down even uh, better. The fact that this is a, a first degree murder investigation suggests that the, the victim was, was targeted. Um. The first degree is uh, it was planned. Mm -hmm. uh, so the from the interviews and information that the investigators have been getting from the interviews uh, they've had enough information that they could. They believe it's uh, it is a first degree murder. Mm -hmm. yes, where I'm going with that is, I know you've got two suspects in custody. The one at large is in is in uh, Kingston, but or Kitchener Waterloo. But I'm just I'm curious. Some people might be wondering, you know, should people in Thunder Bay be concerned about their safety? Uh, this homicide would appear that it's uh, it's within the a certain community. Uh, the vulnerable uh, areas that are targeted, the drug community, uh, the general public, in my opinion, don't have a, a big worry. Um, but uh, it, it seems to be, and the officers are still working on pinpointing uh, who's involved and what area, but for the, the general public, it's, uh, it was a, a targeted event.
So would you say then that it was a drug-related uh, crime? The, I don't know if it's drug-related or not or what the motive was, and the investigators are still working on it. Were the victim and the suspects known to each other? We don't know. Uh, this is also the second firearm homicide now in the city of Thunder Bay uh, in the last six months or so. So you say that uh, the public isn't concerned, but is there a concern that uh, any of this violence could spill over into the general public or someone in the public could get hurt? That's always a concern for the police. Uh, firearms, the bullets travel. So, um, that, and that is a safety issue for the police. Uh, with the OPP homicide that just happened outside of our jurisdiction, there's been three gun-related homicides within the last six months. Uh, that is a concern for Thunder Bay police officers um, and, the, and the, regarding the general public, just a straight bullet or, or these crimes that are being committed that are very violent. Any planned solutions to combat that in the future? We, uh, we are working with the OPP Anishinaabe Aski Police Service and Anishinaabe Police Service right now uh, with a task force t uh, targeting uh, gang activity within Thunder Bay. Um, they have done a lot of good work and you've seen with the media releases there's been quite a few warrants uh, conducted. We've seized a lot of firearms over the last uh, three to four months, uh, a lot of drugs and a lot of money. So they, they're working very hard at trying to combat the gang issues in Thunder Bay. But as, we, as the officers arrest, they go to court, more come in. It's a very lucrative city. We're isolated. Um, and they, they just seem to be coming in all the time. Can you address the listeners about uh, spreading, I guess, rumors or most of the information that's out there that's talking about uh, when uh, Lee Kyoto was found? Uh, can you just address the rumors? I don't know what the rumors were. But you're aware of rumors that are being spread on social media. Well, I've, I've been made aware of uh, different types of how, how the um, body was found, uh, types of death. Uh, police will not release that information. Uh, this is the first time that we've released what we can with the homicide. There are reasons why we can only release certain information. One is respect for the family, uh, for the victim. And with the two males that have been arrested and the one that has a Canada-wide warrant for court, and we don't want to jeopardize the investigation with wrong uh, information. And would you say that the way that the body was found, the rumors that are dealing with that are rumors or are false? I don't know the specifics of, the, uh, of the, how the body was found through the rumors. Sir Boone, do you, the police know when he was in Bay and when he traveled back to Kitchener and you know the details? We have a timeline when he was in Thunder Bay. Um, I don't know and I haven't spoken to investigators when he departed Thunder Bay. So if he does turn himself in, will he be transported back to Thunder Bay? That will be an uh, interaction between the investigators in Thunder Bay with the investigators in Waterloo and the Crown Attorneys. What's the plan? Should he not turn himself in the next number of hours or days or at all? Uh, there's a Canada-wide warrant, so once he's uh, located, he will be arrested and uh, moved to the appropriate facility. It's going to be a little self-serving, but um, we have a case with two charges of first-degree murder and two charges of kidnapping and possibly a third pending um, in seven days, seven to eight days. Uh, can you speak to the work of your detectives uh, to be able to get this amount done in that short amount of time? I, I could tell you our detectives are pretty much uh, run ragged right now. Uh, there's been numerous interviews done, uh, a numerous amount of video surveillance gone over. Uh, they have a tip line that they go through, uh, Crime Stoppers tips that come in providing information and everything has to be followed up. So there'll be information regarding false tips that they have to follow up just in case they're real uh, and the real tips uh, that they follow up which leads us to interviews and further to the arrest. So there's been a lot of um, work put into this. It affects our criminal investigation branch, our forensics identification unit, as well as our community response teams and other uniform patrol. Uh, it's been, a, it's a, been a, a very daunting task. Is there anything else that you can add? I mean, you talked a little bit about the circumstances of uh, Huey's arrest. Um, is there, are there any more details that you're able to share as updates from the news release earlier today? Uh, no, I know the officers and the investigators are working on warrants for other items and uh, once those are 
uh, executed and hopefully get more information towards the homicide and what ha why it happened. The firearm involved has been recovered? No, it hasn't. Warrants for other items. Can you explain that? No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs>